Hello, and welcome to Outdoor Video, your nationally recognized, award-winning LGBTQ plus TV monthly news magazine. I'm Roberta gonzalez Greg. Outlook Video in pre-pandemic COVID-19 times was broadcast to you via the Create TV studios in San Jose. Though we, we are now slowly entering an upgraded COVID-19 safety tier, yes, and slowly reopening, we wish that um, we, you and your families and friends and loved ones are staying safe and well, but we continue to safely bring you these broadcasts via Zoom. Thank you for joining us. The Billy DeFrank Center of Silicon Valley provides the LGBTQ plus community with leadership, advocacy, community services, and support within that community and its allies. The Billy DeFrank Center is conveniently located about a half a mile from the SAP Center and the San Jose Caltrain Station, making it easily accessible for our South Bay community residents. Outlook Video is delighted to bring viewers today, Gabrielle Antalovich, board president of this outstanding community center and no stranger to Outlook Video. Welcome, Gabrielle. <laughs> Thank you. While speaking this, about this center, it was established in 1981, is that correct? That's right. Okay, for this person of Billy DeFrank. Tell us a little bit of history about uh, who is or was Billy DeFrank. And um, though 1981, uh, you may not have been there, but and how long have you been with uh, the Billy DeFrank Center? Well, Billy DeFrank actually was uh, a huge activist in um, the Silicon Valley. In fact, throughout the Bay Area, he was an African-American drag queen who actually loved everybody. His real name is William Price, but Billy DeFrank was his drag name. It's not a French name. <laughs> and I wondered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he did a lot of drag shows and fundraising for all the LGBTQ groups in the 1970s. You know, the Billy DeFrank Center didn't happen in a vacuum. There were all these different groups that were active in the community for a decade before we even opened up. And he actually died of a heart attack a year before we opened. Oh. But, you know, we took his name and just recently we decided to not just have his namesake, but to embrace his spirit of inclusion, love, and generosity, because yes, those indeed. were the three key things about him. And I love that. Yes, indeed. That's what I read about in the bio about, uh, about him as well, that he was very inclusive and that that's exactly what the center's um, mission is. Now, Len, mm -hmm. how long have you been with the Billy DeFrank Center? Well, in 1993, I actually was an employee. And <laughs> when we were still in Stockton Avenue, where Whole Foods is now, um, you know, the Billy DeFrank Center opened up on Keys Street, then moved to Park Avenue, and then to Stockton Avenue. I was working as an employee, uh, as the addiction outreach worker. I did the last drag quit smoking classes. I organized the gay designated drivers in all the gay bars. There was seven gay bars back then and a lot of drinking going on. And, um, and back then, a lot of our people were being arrested for drunk driving and so that's why I did the gay designated driver. The county HIV AIDS program, they were, they were finally getting it that a lot of the uh, gay men were getting HIV because of uh, drinking and substance use and they were looking for an addiction specialist. And I was the only one they knew. So you continued working within the, the center until at what time did you became uh, uh, president of the board? Well, 
I eventually became the executive director of Voices United for 15 years. And then I realized, even though I was openly gay, I had no gay life. <laughs> and so when I was asked to be on the board about six years ago, I went, gay life? <laughs> and I said, yes, you know, I had missed um, hanging out with um, our people. And so I've been here ever since. And during the pandemic, it's been very different. <laughs> I was about to say that, um, that, that exactly that uh, with the pandemic, the center has, was closed for quite some time. However, it is on the verge of reopening. Is that correct? Tell us about that. Well, you know, it's been interesting. We've been closed, but not shut down. Everything, all of our discussion groups and activities went virtual. And so as we are, you know, planning to open up, we are aligning ourselves with the city community centers. And what we're finding is people want hybrid meetings. And so we are, you know, working hard with um you know the corporate companies that help provide that and so even if we don't have it in place right away we um eventually will i'm excited well silicon valley has done other coordinating um with the billy de frank center for other events is that correct recent events for pride well silicon valley pride and the billy de frank center are very close you know, we work very closely together. In fact, uh, they just had a trans, uh, trans uh, rally in our parking mm -hmm. lot. And also the um, Recovery Cafe had a bike uh, ride for Pride. And one of the stops was the parking lot for the Billy to Frank <laughs> Center. <laughs> and We've been actually beautifying it with murals and painting our flags on the, you know, the the parking stops. So it's actually quite a nice environment now. So we can have outdoor events that are very queer friendly. <laughs> so the Billy DeFrank parking lot is the hip place to be, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Neighborhood. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, tell us how just how does the Billy DeFrank do outreach to the community? I know that um, that uh, there are lots of programs, lots of variety of events and such that happen pre-pandemic times. Um, but and during during those times and now especially, how is the Billy DeFrank Center doing outreach to community? Well, we do have an e-newsletter that goes to over 6,000 people, and uh, we're part of the Alameda Business Association, so that's all been on Zoom, and we've been part of the Reimagining the Economic Recovery Task Forces, we've been part of the COVID pandemic, how to reach people about getting vaccinated. So Wonderful. we've been reaching out that way, as well as the regular social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> you know. Those. Okay. Well, why don't you let our viewers know right now, what is that website address so people can take a look at it? Our website is defrank.org. It's almost a song, okay. defrank.org. Remember, Billy DeFrank. It's defrank.org. And all of our social media are slash Billy DeFrank. <laughs> okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. It's easy uh, to remember. Indeed, that is easy to remember. And um, tell us of the, uh, the actual physical address. Well, we're at 938 the Alameda. But the really big news we have is we're going to be working with uh, the Community Health Partnership, which is mainly the Indian Health Center, um, Gardner Community Center, Planned Parenthood, and also Aki. And we will be providing LGBTQ plus affirming health care, health coverage, Wonderful. and resources. And Excellent. we just got a grant from uh, Vice President Susan Ellenberg 
so that the community health partnership can have two part-time people at the Billy DeFrank Center. <sighs> Fabulous. That is yeah. absolutely fabulous. Because unfortunately, many people within the LGBT community um, have don't have that accessibility to good and proper health care, either through yeah. lack of insurance, uh, lack of, of benefits. And so this is a wonderful way that they can connect with these programs. Thank you, Billy DeFrank, for stepping up for our community. This is fabulous. Yes. Okay. Um, anything else that's uh, that's fantastically um, worth mentioning <laughs> and happening in the community? That is the big, big news. You know, okay. we are already out and about um, doing outreach at different events. I think um, June was the busiest out and about uh, month on the planet, going from nothing to everything cried. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it, it's not all uh, healthcare and and business. You've got a lot of fun things happening too. You have games on certain nights uh, where yes. people can and and creative and creativity. Um, lots of different things going on. Yeah, Tell us a little bit about that. Rainbow Bingo on Wednesday. Hey, nights. we'll be coming back. <laughs> Yay! All right, that's terrific. Well, see that so it's. It's fun yeah. and games and good stuff too. And oh, don't okay. forget, we have one of the biggest um, LGBTQ libraries um, in the country with over 5,000 LGBTQ plus books. And do you have a book club? Actually, um, we're looking for someone who would there like to run a queer book club. So, Get in touch with okay. me. Fabulous. Hey, viewers. Frank.org. <laughs> okay. Hey, viewers. Pay attention to that. Those of you who love to read, this is a great opportunity to share that information and that knowledge, as well as share those wonderful books. Well, oh, yeah. Gabrielle, thank you so very much for bringing us up to speed on the Billy DeFrank Center, for providing these services for our community and enriching all of our lives. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diana Adrian, and you're watching Outlook Video. Hi, I'm Councilmember Deb Davis from the City of San Jose, and I help sponsor these murals here at the Billy DeFrank Center. The City of San Jose has a Beautify SJ program, and it is to combat graffiti, especially hate graffiti and gang-related graffiti. And we found that the best way to do that is to paint murals on places that get a lot of graffiti. So we did that here at the Billy DeFrank Center. This particular site was getting graffitied over and over again, and it's very costly to have to paint over graffiti repeatedly. And so it's actually cheaper to support a local artist and to get a nice, beautiful mural painted on, on a piece of uh, property or a side of a building. So here we have an artist who used all the different flags of the LGBTQ plus community, and you can see them represented on the butterflies around this beautiful tree. This is the other mural I sponsored at the Billy DeFrank Center, and it represents not only the um, LGBTQ plus community, but also our communities of color. One of the things that I really love about the Billy DeFrank Center is their welcoming of everyone, including their allies. We love to get mail from you. Email us at comments at outlookvideo.org. To contact us by phone, call 408-293-3040, extension 205. Visit our website at outlookvideo.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash outlookvideo. And connect with us at facebook.com slash outlookvideo. Welcome to the Intersex Inclusive Progress Pride Flag Raising Ceremony. Thank you for being your, in your authenticity. Thank you for being visible. 
My name is Sarah Fernando. I use she, her pronouns. I work for the County of Santa Clara. Uh, the intersex inclusive progressive or uh, progress pride flag. My name is Valentina Vicchietti. My pronouns are she and they. I was born with an intersex variation. I have a lesbian sexuality and I have mixed heritage. I am a writer and artist. I founded Intersex Equality Rights UK. We campaign for inclusion, equity, and representation. What is intersex? And why did I redesign the pride flag? Intersex is an umbrella term for over 40 natural, physical variations in our sex characteristics that we are born with. When I saw Daniel Quasar's Pride Progress flag in 2018, I loved that it included Gilbert Baker's rainbow flag, Monica Helm's trans flag, and Amber Hikes' black and brown stripes. In that moment, I had a vision of Morgan Carpenter's 2013 intersex flag fitting into the white triangular space. I did not know that and three years later, it would be me, a grassroots activist, who would create this inclusion. I wanted to include the intersex flag in a balanced way so that we all could fit together on this flag and take up space in a shared way without domination and create visual inclusion, allyship, and solidarity. Since then, I have had overwhelming support from my intersex community and allies across the globe. I made this flag to bring joy to my community and create a greater understanding of our distinct population. And through your allyship, you all have brought me so much joy in return. Everybody, Big round of applause, and I want to hear it because they got to hear it all the way across the seas for Valentino Big Yeti! Pride Month, Pride Month is more than celebration. It's a symbol of social progress and the hard march towards equality in America for all Americans. Our LGBTQ community is diverse. It is through these various lived experiences that we can continue to listen and improve ourselves and our county on the road to equality. Not just for the LGBTQ community, but for everyone in our nation. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Today as we raise the Progress Pride flag, we are raising more than the colorful fabric. And thank you for ironing it last night. We are raising our thoughts, our expectations, and our hopes for the future. A future of acceptance and inclusion, where an event such as this one today no longer is a call for more inclusive and safe community, but a reflection of our accomplishments in a truly just and equitable society that we helped create. A future where a person who identifies as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning doesn't preclude them from a safe and successful life and a happy future. Pride represents courage, strength, openness, unconditional love, kindness, and compassion. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of the County of Santa Clara does hereby proclaim the month of June 2021 as LBGTQ+. Pride Month. This is passed and adopted unanimously by the board you see before you. Thank you all very much, and please congratulate yourselves. Pride represents courage, strength, openness, unconditional love, resilience, kindness, and compassion. The LGBTQAI plus community celebrates this month with remembrance for the far, far too many individuals who have been killed injured, discriminated against, shunned, and closeted. Thankfully, some progress has been made in the realms of acceptance, marriage, and diversity. But as we all know, 
There is so much more that needs to be done. I am so proud that here in Santa Clara County, we have so many organizations working to support individuals in their gender and sexuality journey. Our first in the nation LGBTQ Affairs Office, along with Billy DeFrank Center, Project Moore, Bill Wilson Center, Avenidas, Youth Space, Queer Space, the Transgender Health Clinic, Proud Parents, Key Flag, and others too numerous to mention, speak to our community's commitment to equality, respect, and support. It was so exciting and heart-filling to visit the Queer Silicon Valley exhibit at, at San Jose History Park last week to mark the struggles and honor all who did so much right here. One of the things that struck me was how many of the faces in the photographs from 10, 20, 30 years ago are still leaders in our community today. You have fought long and hard and are still at it. It would be easy to dismiss the flag as just a symbol. And it would be easy to dismiss the raising of the flag as just a gesture. But that would be wrong on both counts. Yes, the flag is a symbol, but it's an important symbol. It's a symbol that says, no matter who you are, no matter who you love, no matter how you love, no matter how you identify. We're all part of the same family and we're all entitled to the same measure of dignity and respect. And when we raise the flag, yes, it's a gesture, but it's more than a gesture. It's a gesture that says that we as a county are committed to making those aspirational goals real for each and every one of the two million people who call Santa Clara County home. The progress flag reminds us that the future can be bright and we do have the ability to change our world and we have changed our world. We will continue to change our world. So as everyone enters this plaza, sees this beautiful flag called the progress flag, I hope they remember the past, the present, and the future, and are committed to make the future a better place for all of us. Expanding on what uh, Supervisor Smigan said, flags are a symbol and a promise. They represent who we are, what we stand for. They are proof that we were here, that we endured, that we have waged battle and we're still standing. It signifies who we choose to include in the us. These last 15 months, have been hard, especially since many of our community was already experiencing isolation, economic instability, limited healthcare access, and other disparities. Today, on the last day of Pride Month, we declare we are still here. Woo! 14 years right around this period of time, I was a newly elected uh, member of the Board of Supervisors uh, first openly gay supervisor, and I realized at the very beginning of June in uh, 2007, we had never raised the rainbow flag here at the county building, and I said to myself, we're going to change that. And so working with Pete Kutras, who was the county executive at the time, along with all my staff members, uh, we raised it uh, very proudly, and it was a big ceremony, and it's wonderful that it continues on uh, today, so it's really nice uh, to be here. I do want to say that uh, in, uh, six years ago, after the Supreme Court uh, Obergefell uh, decision, I remember uh, hearing that on the news, and then I called up um, Dr. Smith, and I said, uh, is, how can we go about raising the flag in honor of that great decision? And he said, no problem, and up the flag went. And then uh, he and I were talking in my office, and we both decided that we needed to have the rainbow flag fly every day that the county building was open. I am an LGBTQ plus fellow for the upcoming pilot called Pride Project from the Young Women's Freedom Center. I first started with the center as an intern where I got a lot of help that honestly changed my lifestyle 
on a round day that it opened my eyes to want to help other youth like me. Let me tell you guys what Pride Month means to me. I personally think that Pride Month is very important for the world to recognize an impact for the people who identify as LGBTQ+, that they had in this world. It is important to celebrate that. I think it's important for people to be able to express their authentic selves and being proud of who they are. At the end of the day, we're just fighting for equality for all. We have to celebrate the progress that has been made as a community. Thank you all. And that's a wrap for this month's edition of Outlook Video. You can watch extended versions of our segments and archive past programs on Outlook Video's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Outlook Video. Be sure to click on the subscribe button and also click on the bell for notifications of our latest videos. Also friend us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Outlook Video. Outlook Video is made possible by generous donations from viewers like you and talented volunteers behind the camera whose names you'll see as we close. And if you live in the Bay Area and would like to volunteer at Outlook Video, contact us through our Facebook page. <laughs>